Hey guys, it's PP here. Today we're going to talk about some specific mechanics and skill interactions between skills that are commonly used in the corrupted dungeons. Let's dive right into it. First, you should know that not every skill that gives you invulnerability against damage protects you from CC. So for example, the Chiu Hao Yi protects you from damage, but it does not protect you against crowd control effects such as knockbacks. You can see in these clips that even though the Chiu Hao player is protecting himself with the E, the Halofall player can still come in here and knock him up and knock him out. Now, if you are using a Chiu Hao, what this means for you is that you don't want to use your E to protect yourself when you're close to traps, because this means that your, uh, your opponent, if he has a knockback on him, can just easily line you up and knock you into a, like a fire trap, while you are unable to move. You can do the same thing with a light crossbow or with any kind of knockbacks, uh, but the re reason why we're here we use the light crossbow is we want to show you that even when you get knocked out of your E as a Chiu Hao player, you still don't take damage for the duration of the self-stun. Also note that the Cleric Cow, while it has the same animation effects as the Chiu Hao E, it is actually a full invulnerability skill, and it will protect you against the CC, unlike the Chiu Hao Yi. Now, of course, the Chiu Hao Yi is not the only thing that behaves like this. Uh, we have a couple of other examples here. For example, the Frost Nova skill on Frost Ws, and the uh, the Teleport skill, I think it's called Blink, on um, Cleric Sandals. Uh, and also chain slash on all daggers. Uh, they all behave the same way. They protect you against damage, but not against CC. On screen right now, there's a list of a few commonly used skills on the left that gives you full complete protection against CC and damage. And then on the right, we have a few skills that gives you only protection against the damage and not CC. Now, these are just a few examples. They're definitely not every skill in the game that gives you some kind of vulnerability. Uh, these are just a few commonly used examples. And if you want a full list, you can join my Discord and uh, I'll have a text channel dedicated to this topic. Now, let's talk a little bit about the other skills. The Frost W, Frost Nova, protects you only against damage, not against CC. So watch closely. If I blink in place with Frost Nova while the Claymore hits me with an E, I will take no damage, but I will get the stun. If I blink a long distance away, I can dodge both the stun and the CC. But this is because melee skills such as the... Uh, Claymore E has a certain hitbox to it, and if you dash, if you dash too far away, you will leave the hitbox of this skill, and you will not be hit by it at all. So in that case, you're not really iframing the Claymore E; you're just getting out of its range. If you actually do get hit by it, you will get stunned, but you. You will not take damage from it while you're using the Frost Nova the skill. And this applies to all uh, iframe teleports, right? So here I'm using the Cleric Sando uh, as a demonstration. It does the same thing as the Frost Nova W. The Chain Slash W on daggers uh, is also another example of this. And if you watch carefully here, you see me getting hit by the crossbow W silence, and I get the silence on me, but the little zero, a little grayed out zero pops up above my head, so I didn't actually take damage from it. Now, as a tip for bolt casters and light crossbows or whatever crossbow you're using that uses that, that skill shot W, um, when you're playing against dagger players, they'll always use their mobility to try to avoid getting hit by that silence or that knockback right so what you can do especially if you're using the silence because the silence has a really long animation time right so a lot of times you start the silence and the moment they see the animation start they'll chain slash across you to like dodge that silence but if you fire your silence backwards 
then when they chain slash, they will chain slash right into your silence. And yes, they will dodge the damage part of your silence, uh, the damage part of your W, but they will still get hit by the actual silence, right? So that means you can silence them and then hit your bowcaster E right afterwards. Now, of course, you don't want to like outplay yourself by firing that that W backwards. Um, what I recommend is if you fight against a, a dagger player, the first time you engage them, if they keep dodging your W, uh, you can you know demon boot or whatever boot you're using, get a reset, and then on the second engage, you do this trick, right? Because if they got it the first time, you know they're looking for it. Then the second time, you might get them with this. Now we talked about some skills that gives you protection against damage, but not CC. But there are also skills that protect you against CC, but not damage. Now most of these skills, for example, the Avalonian Spear E or the Avalonian Crossbow E, uh, they will say in the tooltips that the skill uh, that will say, for example, this uh, during the charge you cannot be stopped, or during the channel you cannot be interrupted, or something like that. Uh, but there's one that not a lot of people know about because it doesn't say in the tooltips, and that's the Black Hand's E. The Black Hand E is a two-hit channel skill. It can be cancelled by the caster, but it cannot be cancelled by incoming crowd control. Now, you just saw a couple of interactions between the Black Hand E and the Claymore and Chowhow E's. But there's another and perhaps more useful application of this Black and E is you can use it to counter demon helmets. There's two ways you can do this. When they activate demon helmet, they'll see a buff pop up on their buff bar, and that buff can be purged off by your Black and E. And the second part is if they actually get the uh, the purple smoke auto attack onto you. There is a delay between their auto attack and when the uh, when the silence actually hits you, right? So during that delay, if you start the channel of your black and E, you will not be silenced. Now, when you're watching the interaction between the black and E and the claymore E, you'll probably no have uh, noticed that there's something funky going on with the claymore E as well. And let's talk about that a little bit. So the Claymore E actually has three parts to it. First, during the channel of the Claymore E, you are immune to CC, but not to damage. And then while you're actually charging, you're immune to CC and damage. After you're done charging, there's going to be a little bit of an act aftercast animation of your character like pulling your sword out of the other guy's body. And during that animation, you are immune to damage, but not to CC. Watch again carefully. Let's move away from the iframes now and talk about dots and damage buffs. So damage over time effects in this game have their damage calculated at the time of the application of the dot. So what, uh, what that means is if you put a dot on someone, and then you turn on some damage amplification effects like a uh, royal hood or druid robe the amount of damage that that dot does will remain the same unless you reapply it so let's watch again here one stack of the grudge stacks is taking 14 per tick without damage buffs if i turn the damage buffs on first it's doing now 16 per tick. If I apply the dot first and then turn on damage buffs, it's still doing 14 per tick. So what this means for a curse player is if you have some kind of damage buff on you, for example, keeper cape is pretty common, right? So uh, if you're using a keeper cape, just make sure that even if your opponent already has four stacks on him, just make sure you reapply the Q stack after your keeper cape procs. That way you'll do extra damage with your Qs. If your Keeper Cape procs and say for example they get out of your range and you cannot reapply that Q dot, 
then your key will remain whatever damage it was doing before. It's not gonna affect it. It's not gonna get affected by the keeper cape. Now it's important to know that the E skill on the one hand purse is not a dot effect. It's delayed damage, but it's not a dot. So the damage amplification calculation for your E skill is done at the moment that that skull actually pops, right? So if you put the skull on first and then you go activate your buffs, it will do extra damage. And by the way, Light Crossbow E actually works the same way as the Curse E. I know that not too long ago, the Light Crossbow E counted as a dot. You used to be able to remove it with a Guardian Helmet, but when they did that little tweak to make it so that uh, the Light Crossbow E cannot be removed by Guardian Helmets anymore, they made it not a dot anymore. So the damage calculation of it also works the same way as uh, the Curse E now. Let's also talk about healing the sickness here. If a healer keeps spamming heals at himself, he, uh, he will get a debuff on him called Healing Sickness that reduces all incoming healing by 40%. This debuff will go away if he heals another target, and it will extend its duration if he keeps spamming heals at himself. However, this Healing Sickness debuff only gets applied by the healer's Q skills. It does not get applied by W's and E's. So you can see in this clip here that uh, Minty Pie, he keeps spamming heals at himself, he gets the purple debuff that just popped up, and now he's healing only with W's and E's. And yes, they, the W's and E's are getting reduced healing, but they're not extending the duration of that debuff. Now, let's talk about Hellion issues. In one of my older mechanics and skill interaction videos, I talked pretty extensively about Hellion shoes, how to play with them and how to play against them. In this video, I'm just going to cover a little bit of the stuff that I didn't talk about last time. And by the way, if you haven't watched that other video that I'm talking about, uh, I'll put the link in the video descriptions below and I highly recommend that you go watch it. So with Hellion Shoes, if you interrupt the channel time of the Hellion Shoes, uh, the Hellion Shoe user will lose both his stealth and his damage buff. Right? So in this clip, we're doing it with a light crossbow knockback, but you can do the same thing with a bow Q knockback, with a snare charge on maze, with a uh, um, one hand spear E, or anything that has a knockback that can hit them in stealth will cancel the channel of their shoes and take away their stealth and their damage. Now, it's important to know that uh, during the channel of the shoes, they are not CC immune, but while the Hellion Shoe user is flying at you, they are immune to, at least they're immune to knockbacks. I don't think they're immune to like silence or anything like that, but I'm pretty sure they're immune to force movements. So they can just fly through wind walls, and they can just ignore your W knockback shot if they are already flying at you. Right, so if you are a crossbow player or a bow player and you rely on that knockback to counter the heli uh, the Hellion shoe, make sure you hit it while they're in stealth or after they have already landed. And if you're gonna knock them back after they dash at you, make sure that you don't miss. <laughs> the Hellion shoe will always place the other guy right on top of you, and some of these uh, hitboxes for the skill shots they begin a little bit ahead of you. So uh, if you use your W skill while you're standing completely still, it's very easy for you to miss that skill shot. So a way to help against this is make sure you're moving while they dash at you, and then it'll be easier to land the knockback after they complete the dash. Okay, so next we're gonna talk about some skill interactions with purges and what can and cannot be purged. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is Iron Will and Sword W Cripple. Iron Will is supposed to protect the sword user from 
urges. While you're using Iron Will, your sword stacks cannot be removed by things like Mage Robes or Finicals, but it can be removed by Spirit W Cripple, and that's because Cripple is not actually coded like a purge. It's more of a uh, movement stealing kind of steal. It just doesn't count as a purge, okay? And because it doesn't count as a purge, it will remove your run buffs through Iron Will, and it will actually remove Iron Will itself, okay? So what that means is if you're a spear user and you're facing a sword matchup, what you could do is when they stack their Qs on you, uh, every time they hit three stacks, you can purge it with Cripple or Avalonian Spear E. And specifically, you want to check out, like you want to inspect them and see if they're using Reflect or if they're using Iron Whale. And if they're using Iron Whale, you basically save your W for their W, right? So if they're Q stacking on you, when they hit three stacks, you purge it with Avalonian Spear E. But if they're putting an Iron Whale in there, let's say if they do two stacks and then Iron Whale, then you purge that with Cripple. And that way, they'll never get their Q stacks and their E will never do damage. Now, there are some things that Cripple cannot remove, and those are channeled movement skills. Like, for example, uh, in this case, we're using the Lumberjack work boots, which we'll talk about again later, but Lumberjack work boots is a channel skill. You cannot Cripple it. And uh, Scholar Sandals is uh, another example of this. And you also cannot remove Guardian boots because Guardian boots just can't be removed. And another funky one is uh, the Oath Keeper E. Now uh, the Oath Keeper E, well, it's funky. So here's how it works. Uh, first, you can see there's two buffs on the Oath Keeper's uh, buff bar. One of these buffs is the shield plus the movement speed. The other buff is the healing on hit. The healing on hit cannot be purged off. Period. Even if it's a Finkel or a Mage Robe, it cannot be purged. If it's but the shield part of it, the shield and the movement speed part of it, that can be purged. But when you hit it with a cripple, the cripple does steal the movement, but it does not remove the shield. When you hit it with, let's say, a fin cow, the fin cow will remove the shield and the movement, but it will not remove the uh, the healing on hit. So again, cripple. And you can see he's still healing, he's got the shield, but the movement speed was stolen. And then if I use a uh, fin cow to purge it, he loses the shield, but he's still healing. Oh, and he loses the, uh, the movement too, but he's still healing. Now let's talk about the Axe Q. Uh, the AoE Axe Q has recently been reworked. It does less damage now to people that are in... Uh, that are in less than 3 meters range from you, and it does more damage now, a lot more damage now, to people that are more than 3 meters away from you, but less than 6 meters away from you, right? Because the 6 meter is the uh, the range of the skill. If you're more than 6 meters, then it doesn't hit you at all. And if you're less than 3 meters away from the Axe player, the Axe player will do less damage to you. Um, so... Overall, I think this is a pretty big buff for Axe players in group play, but in solo play, this basically means that you don't have a Q anymore on the Axe player, because it's against ranged builds, against kiting builds, you won't be able to hit them at all. And then against melee builds, uh, if the melee player just stays right on top of you, then you will always be doing less damage to the melee player, right? So uh, people have been... A lot of people, like, they look at this Axe buff and they're all hyped up for it. They think they'll do so much more damage now. But really, as far as Corrupted Dungeons go, uh, this is actually a nerf to Axe in 1v1 PvP. And that 3 meter threshold, by the way, it's basically the range of your auto attack. Like, if you're just barely in range to auto attack someone, you will hit them with the 6 meter damage. If you take one step closer to that and then use your Q, you will hit them with the lesser, the 3 meter damage. Alright, so moving on quick, we're going to talk about channel skills and stealth. Alright, so the first example here is Fire Artillery and Assassin Jacket. You can see here the 
you know, I was getting targeted by the fire artillery, and then when I pop into stealth, it canceled his channel and it stopped his targeting. Uh, the same kind of mechanic will work with any kind of channel skills like Ballcaster E, Claw E, uh, Crossbow Q Auto Fire, even a Black Hand E. If you Black Hand E someone and it goes into Undead Cape, that's gonna cancel the second hit of your uh, your Black Hand E as well. And this is a part of the reason why I encourage people to use the Assassin Jacket if they're interested in the Inferno Shield skill on Leathers. I encourage them to use Assassin Jacket instead of things like uh, Spectre or Tenacity Jacket because of the usefulness of that ambush skill to counter specific things like Bulkcasters, for example. Alright, so that's it for this video, but last night while I was recording this with Minty Pie, uh, we tested a bunch of other things involving different gathering shoes. So we all know that currently in the Corrupted Dungeons meta, uh, the gathering shoes, the courier work boots are like super OP right now. A lot of people are using them, a lot of people are abusing them, and they're gonna get nerfed soon. They already in a, SBI already announced that uh, in the next patch, Warrior Work Boots are going to get a tripled cooldown, so they're probably going to be useless now for Corrupted Dungeons. They might still be good for open world, but they're probably going to become useless for Corrupted Dungeons. So, we were looking for some replacements for the, um, for the Courier Work Boots, and I'm sorry SBI, but after you nerf these Gathering Shoes, the new Corrupted Dungeon meta is probably still going to be Gathering Shoes, just some different Gathering Shoes. So uh, for those of you who are interested in our testing results from last night with these different Gathering Shoes, make sure you are subscribed to this channel, click that notification bell, and you'll be notified when I post that video. Now before I peace out, I just want to quickly bring your attention to albionstats.com. Albion Stats is a third-party website that collects information from the LPN API and analyzes that information for PvP players. So uh, right now they have a 1v1 section and they have a 2v2 section. And basically what you can do with this website is you can check out what the most popular builds are, uh, how good their win rates are, you can look up top players and what their builds are. And it's just a really, really useful tool for uh, PvP players to kind of keep themselves up to date and uh, make sure they're not like getting left behind by all the big brain players coming up with new metas. And AlbionStats.com is looking for donations right now. Because even though it's a .com, as you can see, there's no ads on this website yet. So uh, to help them keep running and keep evolving, they're looking for donations through their Patreon page. And they're just asking for like a $3 to a $5 donation. And this will be really helpful to them. And it will really be helpful to us as well, because as LPN players, we use this website. Like this is probably the best LBN reference website right now, uh, at least for us PvP players. So uh, if you have the money to spare, please go over to albionstats.com right now and just give them a little help. Alright, now that's all for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys next time.